So I wanted to do a quick video looking at some other kind of common questions I get when it comes to the good folk. So this would be fairies, elves, selkies in general, sort of that entire range of otherworldly beings. And there's sort of a, a whole genre, I guess you'd say, of common questions, which usually sort of relate to the physiology, we'll say, of these beings. So we're going to kind of go down through this list of the questions I get asked and the answers that we can find in folklore. So do the good folk eat? We definitely have accounts of them in folklore eating various things. And by various things, I mean kind of everything from what we would normally consider food from a human perspective, fruit, vegetable, cooked items, to things that we would not normally consider food. Uh, it can get very random, um, you know, things from a forest floor, kind of uh, miscellaneous flotsam and jetsam, to, of course, um, humans who are on the menu in a range of folklore, um, and other sorts of animals kind of eaten raw, depending again on what specific type of being we're talking about. But it kind of covers a whole range, and we definitely have these accounts of them physically eating things. Of course, we also have a wide range of accounts where they don't physically consume the item, but they consume the essence or the spirit of the item. So that is also something to kind of keep in mind with this subject. Related to that, do they drink? And this is another thing that goes both ways, so to speak. Um, we do have the accounts again of them just consuming the essence spirit of the item and leaving behind the physical remains. We do also have a lot of folklore where we do see them physically consuming the liquid, particularly milk and alcohol are ones that get mentioned in various stories. So yes, they do eat. Yes, they do drink in the folklore. Now, related to that, and this is a question I have been asked before, when humans eat and drink, this then results in another bodily function occurring. Does that happen with fairies? So do we have any actual accounts of fairies when it comes to urinating or defecating? And the answer surprisingly is yes. Uh, you might remember, and I know I've mentioned this in previous videos, that there is a folk belief that at Samhain, at the end of October generally, you are not supposed to eat any wild berries that are left because the puka, which is a kind of um, Irish fairy type of being, urinates on them. So that kind of clearly gives us that answer. And we do see other similar types of stories. And as well, if we look at, for example, the Tuathdanan, the old Irish gods who were then said to go into the Shi and become people of the fairy mounds, we have accounts in the mythology which also mention urinating and defecating. So not necessarily the most fun topic, but it is something that we, we do see in the folklore and we do have a definitive answer to. If you were ever curious, yes. Um, I will also note, however, that it is good to keep in mind that across all of the mythology, the good folk are very well known. Um, and by this, I mean from like Iceland to Ireland to continental Western Europe for really having an issue with human waste and animal waste of that nature. Um, they're very averse to it, it will drive them off, it can be used to ward against them. Um, so while yes, we have examples of them having that physicality to them, um, it is not something that they themselves seem to be really super fond of. Um, just maybe something to keep in mind in the course of this discussion. Uh, beyond that, physicality of fairies, we know that they can be physical, um, tangible, they can engage with humans. Um, we do have a range of stories relating to pretty much any physical activity uh, you could think of. So if you want to ask, like, can fairies like physically fight a human? Yes, we have plenty of stories about that. Um, if you want to ask if they can engage in sexual activity, I'm not going to get into that in this video, but I've done an entire separate video just about that subject. Again, the answer is yes. Um, anything sort of along those lines, we do have examples of it in the folklore. Um, do fairies sleep? Uh, do the good folks sleep? Uh, again, this is something that people occasionally wonder about. 
and it is something that we do find in the folklore. Um, I have run across more modern, um, particularly in some urban fantasy uh, ideas that the good folk, the fairy folk, the folk of the other world, do not need to sleep. Uh, we're not capable of sleeping or capable of dreaming, but that is an entirely modern fiction kind of idea. We do see quite a few accounts across the folklore of these beings uh, sleeping. And, uh, for example, you could look at the Ballad of Lady Isabel and the Elfin Knight. The way that she defeats the Elfin Knight is by um, lulling him to sleep um, and then killing him. To be fair, he was trying to kill her, so you know she just beat him to it. But a clear example of, in that case, an elf um, sleeping. So that is definitely something they do. Uh, several different scholars have mentioned um, in various sources from Catherine Briggs onward um, that the good folk in general across the folklore tend to engage in all of the activities that we would see or expect humans to engage with. So while we do sort of picture them again because often of the influence of sort of modern fiction particularly Tolkien as these sort of highly evolved, um, beautiful sort of beings. Um, really what we find across the folklore is that they are in many ways very similar to humans except for being otherworldly and having magic and having these extra abilities. Um, Shape-shifting is a good example that comes to mind. Not something humans can do generally, but um, something that the other crowd can do. So, in general, most of those sorts of human types of activities, that whole range, is going to be covered under things that, yes, we will find in the folklore applied to the good folk. Um, again, some variants depending on what specific type of good folk we're talking about, but in general. Um, and I will also comment here on, do the good folk get sick, do they age, and do they die? Kind of also falling into the physiology category. So, do they age? That is a very complicated question, which might surprise some people. We have quite a lot of folklore that says that no, um, they are the ever young, they are eternally youthful, and etc. However, we do also have folklore of these beings um, being elderly or described as aging. Uh, you know, the um, Fairy House on Selina Moor is one good example that uh, depicts or shows elderly fairy beings. And it seems to be that this is another one of those things that can either be um, very type specific, so certain types may age while others do not. And also, when we're talking about fairies and age, a lot of times the ones who age or are perceived as being old are in fact like enormously old by human standards, um, truly ancient. So that might also be a factor in it. And of course we can't underestimate um, that shape-changing ability and that glamour, that magic that they have to deceive human senses. So are they actually old or are they just presenting as old to the humans perceiving them in the stories? That I can't tell you. Who knows? But it is worth noting that across the folklore we do see this range of belief from no, they do not age, to um, yes, they do. Um, there's a certain belief, for example, with the Murians, which is a particular type of fairy being, that as they age they get smaller and smaller and smaller until they're the size of an ant, and then they kind of just cease to be perceivable um, or exist within our world. So kind of a complicated subject on that one. Do they get sick? Um, generally across the folklore, no. There are some very rare and particular exceptions to that. Um, for example, we do see descriptions of particularly fairy babies being sickly, um, sort of being born uh, unwell, as it were. But generally speaking, um, the adults good folk, uh, if we can use that term with them, um, I'm not sure adult really applies to kind of immortal beings, but the not infant and children good folk uh, do not seem to get sick um, in, in a human kind of concept. They don't seem to have illnesses. 
they can be injured. So we do see folklore, we do have stories where we have one of these beings who has been injured and is sort of suffering and not healing from that injury. And then that has to be addressed. But illness in the sense of like a cold or the flu, um, gastrointestinal upset sort of thing, it is not something we usually see um, in the bulk of the folklore. And that kind of brings us to this last concept, um, do they die? Are they truly immortal? Now, it does not seem like they die of illness or old age. And we do have quite a bit of specific folk belief, at least in the Irish and Scottish, that says definitively, no, they do not. Um, they, they do not die of um, sickness or old age. However, we do have accounts of fairy funerals. We do have accounts of um, different members of the good folk being killed. This is usually through violence. So they can be physically wounded. They can be physically injured. They can be killed um, through various violent means. Um, that is a possibility. So I don't think we could describe them necessarily as immortal um, in the, the normal usage of the term but they are certainly very long-lived compared to humans and they do not um, generally have any sort of illness or weakness due to age in the way that humans would have. So that is one kind of significant difference whereas a lot of their physicality seems to be very similar to what we would expect to see with humans eating, drinking, the end result of eating and drinking, um, having sex to reproduce, uh, fighting, playing games, um, physical interactions, all of that kind of stuff we do see. But um, death from old age, generally not. Um, even the Murians, it's, you know, they, they shrink down and eventually disappear, but it's a little unclear what happens at that point to them, whether they just cease to exist in our reality or our perception or what's really going on there. Generally speaking, though, um, we, we really don't see death from illness or old age as something that's in the folklore relating to the good folk. Death by violence, completely different matter. That definitely does happen. So that is kind of just a really quick look at the physicality of these beings, um, sort of comparable to humans um, and, you know, from a human perspective in ways that we would understand across the bulk of the folklore. If anyone has any additional questions or particular aspects that I didn't touch on in all this, please feel free to ask in the comments and I will try to get to it um, as soon as I have a chance. It has been a little hectic, which is why I haven't done a video recently, but I hope this one does answer some of the more common questions um, and also sort of help um, anchor these beings uh, in a way that would be easier to understand in relation to humans if that makes sense. So I hope everyone has a good day. Any questions, just drop them in the comments.